بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين نبينا محمد الأمين ومسك لختام لسائد الأنبياء والمرسلين وبعد My dearest brothers and sisters welcome to another episode and inshallah in this episode we are going to be speaking about a very important part of our religion and that is Hajj and how we can prepare for Hajj this very important journey within our life, a lifetime journey following the footsteps of Ibrahim alayhi salam. My dearest brothers and sisters, in the very beginning we want to mention Hajj is a very unique type of ibadah. It is very different from any other types of ibadah. Why? Because it's connected to a certain place and it's connected to a certain time period. If you want to pray, you can pray any time. With the exception of the periods that are makruh, disliked, you can pray anytime. You can go to the masjid and pray. You can pray at home. It doesn't require that you go to a certain place. It doesn't require a certain time. But with Hajj, it's very unique that Hajj is only performed in certain months. So the months of Hajj is Shawwal, Dil Qa'da, and Dil Hajjah. And Hajj cannot be performed at home. It cannot be performed in Europe, it cannot be performed in Africa. It has a specific location and that is the house of Allah Azza wa Jal in Mecca. So brothers and sisters, Allah Azza wa Jal, He gives us certain opportunities throughout the year. Whether it's Ramadan, whether it's Muharram, whether it's Hajj, Allah Azza wa Jal, His favor upon His servants is that He gives them certain opportunities throughout the year and these opportunities are given so that we are able to attain the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, the closeness of Allah Azza wa Jal. From amongst those ibadat is Hajj and it's not just a small type of ibadah but it's one of the pillars of Al-Islam, one of the fundamental pillars of Al-Islam, one of the integral branches of faith. So Iman is a solid tree and Consider it to have many, many branches. As the hadith mentions, 70 branches. Hajj is one of those important, fundamental branches of faith, an integral part of our ibadat. So when a person goes to Hajj, it's an opportunity for them to purify their sins. And the Prophet ﷺ, he says in this narration that just the way the blacksmith, the blowing of the bellows removes the rust, this is how a person's sin is removed when they go to Hajj. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ says, a person who goes to Hajj and they adhere to all of the regulations of Hajj, they maintain uh, patience, they don't violate uh, any of the rules and regulations of Hajj, and they perform the Hajj properly. They will return back from Hajj like a new baby. A new baby is ma'asum, free from any sin. The young child who is born, the young baby who is born, doesn't have any sin. It is born bela dhambin, without any sin. When a person comes back from hajj, and if they perform hajj according to the teaching of the Prophet wasallam properly, and they don't violate any of the rules of hajj, then they return back like that baby. How can I achieve that status? How am I able to perform such a hajj? I need to know some preconditions, prerequisites. I need to really prepare for hajj. And part of my preparation for hajj is to draw up a comprehensive plan for hajj. I'm going to fulfill an action that is wajib. It's obligatory upon each person who has the physical ability and financial ability. If you are physically able, financially able, then Hajj is an obligation upon you. To fulfill this obligation, all of the preconditions that you need is also an obligation. And this is why in the Sharia, there is a Qaida, there is a rule 
which is known as ma la yatimmu al-wajibu illa bihi fa huwa wajibun in order to fulfill a wajib all of the resources that you need is also wajib so if you're going to hajj studying about hajj buying a book going online reading about the pillars of hajj how what do i do when i go to arafah what do i do when i go to muzdalifa how do i do tawaf while i'm doing tawaf if i break my wudu what what shall i do when i go to jamarat when i which stone shall i how many pebbles shall i throw all of the masail knowing that is also an obligation don't leave that that to the muallim don't leave that to anybody else it is an obligation upon the hajj the people who are going to hajj the people who are going to hajj it is an obligation upon them ma la yatimmu al wajibu illa bihi fa huwa wajibun to fulfill a wajib everything that is holding you back from fulfilling a wajib you need to have all of those tools and resources is also a wajib if a person was to pray to cover their body is the precondition to do wudu is a precondition both of that is wajib so before we embark on this journey if we've made the intention to go may allah azza wa jalla give us the tawfiq to fulfill this pillar of al islam we have to do some proper study draw up a comprehensive plan something that we're going to be speaking about so hajj is only obligatory once in a person's life the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam upon occasion he says to the people ya ayuha an nas kutiba alaykum al hajj allah azza wa jal has made fasting going to hajj compulsory upon you and i mentioned fasting why allah azza wa jal uses the same word ya ayuha alladhina amanu kutiba alaykum al siyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum ila akhir al aya allah azza wa jal has made it obligatory upon us hajj al aqra ibn habis this companion he comes to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says afi kulli amin ya rasul allah does that mean every year we have to go to hajj and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in response he says no just once in your lifetime is obligatory if you can go more times then that's good tabi'u bayna al hajj wa al umrati rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says tabi'u bayna al hajj right when it comes to hajj and umrah make sure you are frequent why it purifies you it removes your sin it's an opportunity to attain the pleasure of allah you attain the closeness of allah it strengthens your relationship with allah it strengthens your iman it improves your ibadat so on so forth so be frequent but when the companion he asked ya rasulullah afi kulli amin do i need to go every single year the prophet sallallahu sallallahu alaihi wasallam says no he says al hajj maratan fa man zada fa huwa tatawwu hajj is only done once if a person does more than that it will be considered as a voluntary action they will get a huge reward but it will be voluntary so going to hajj once in a lifetime is an obligation for the person who is physically able and financially able allah azza wa jalla he says walillahi ala an-nasi hajj al-bayt man istata'a ilayhi sabila and it is upon the human the muslim the servant of allah to perform the hajj walillahi ala an-nasi hajj al-bayt man istata'a ilayhi sabila the person who is able to what does this al istata'a mean the companions they asked the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says he is zad wa rahilatu it is having the provision to go there meaning the financial ability if you have enough money in your possession then you cannot delay it if you have 10000 pounds in your account for example and after all of your expenses it's surplus ra'sul mal your capital that you have in your account then you must go to hajj and you cannot delay hajj no longer and this is why the scholars they said al hajj wajibun ala al fawri that hajj becomes an obligation immediately when you have the financial ability azadu wa rahilatu if you have the physical ability to get there if the transport is there if the road is safe then you no longer can delay the hajj you have to perform the hajj if you delay the hajj after having the physical and financial ability you are committing a sin and it could be possible that all of a sudden you no longer have that money you no longer have good health then how are you going to hajj and there are so many cases people delayed it i'm not going to hajj until my son gets married i'm not going to hajj until i'm I, my daughter gets married this is the kind of mindset many people have and they delay hajj 
That is not a good mindset to have. When it becomes obligation, obligatory, don't delay it because there is no guarantee that you will meet tomorrow. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says in another narration, Man arad al ajjal. The person who intends to go to Hajj, meaning the person who has financial and physical ability, ajjal. Why? The person should hasten towards performing the Hajj. فَإِنَّهُ قَدْ يَمْرَضُ الْمَرِيضِ The Prophet ﷺ says, perhaps all of a sudden they might fall ill and illness may overcome them or they may become financially uh, incapable of going. They might not be financially stable anymore, physically uh, not well, yeah, incapable. So they're not able to go. So while you have the physical and financial ability, don't delay it. If you've gone to Hajj, Anyone who's been to Hajj, they will know it's a beautiful journey. It's a life-changing journey. How it spiritually elevates you and how you feel more connected to Allah. And when you see all of those historical sites and you follow the footsteps of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Wallahi laysa al khabaruk al muayana. The actual words doesn't do justice to the practical feeling while you are out there. So when you go around the house of Allah and with every tawaf you think about how the Prophet ﷺ walked around the house of Allah and he circumambulated. He did tawaf. The Sahaba, Ibrahim ﷺ with his sons, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِينَ How Ibrahim ﷺ, he placed the foundation of the Kaaba. Then you go to Maqami Ibrahim, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن Maqami Ibrahim Musalla. The Prophet ﷺ prayed two units there. Ibrahim ﷺ established that. And then you go to Zamzam, خَيْرُ مَاءٍ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ مَاءُ Zamzam, the best water you drink. And then you make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal. Then you go to Safa Marwa and you think about the incident of Ismail alayhi salam, his mother and Ibrahim alayhi salam. All of that illustrates to you the beauty of Al-Islam, the beauty of Ibadat and how Allah has preserved all of this beauty for you. And you delay it. What's so important in your life that you're delaying Hajj? You cannot delay Hajj intentionally. You may fall ill, you may lose your money and then you don't have an opportunity to go. Now you were given the opportunity, you didn't take that opportunity. So that is a very important point that we wanted to mention, uh, brothers and sisters. Allah Azza wa Jal, what did he say? وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ إِسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ Imam Al-Baydawi in his tafsir he says وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحُجْ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ أَيْ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحُجْ And the one, it mentions here, the one who has done kufr. Kufr here means وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحُجْ The person who didn't go to Hajj فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Remember, Allah is not in need of your money, He is not in need of your Hajj, He is not in need of your ibadat or anything. We need Allah. Allah doesn't need us. Allah is free from any need. He is غني الكمال لله وحده He is perfect. Allah Azza wa Jal is self-sufficient. And this is why we say Subhan. He is perfect, free from any defect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't delay hajj, make sure you fulfill this responsibility that you have. وَأَتِمُّ الْحَجَّ وَالْعُمْرَةَ لِلَّهِ And hajj and umrah is done only for the sake of Allah azza wa jal. Part of our plan, this comprehensive plan that we're going to establish before we go to hajj is so that we make the best out of our hajj. Part of our plan, we want to mention five points. Number one is we have to purify our intention. I'm not going to Hajj because people are going to call me Haji or all of us. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm known as Haji in the community. Or I go to the mosque regularly and people ask me, why haven't you go to, haven't been to Hajj yet? You have the financial, physical ability. People are constant, constantly pestering me. So then I'm going to Hajj. That's impure intention. Okay, so your intention needs to be pure. Part of our acceptance of our deeds, the prerequisite is husnun niyyah, our intention needs to be pure. And this is why the scholars, they said, اعلم هديت أن أفضل المنن علم يزيل الشك عنك والدرن ونيتنا شرط لسائر العمل بها الصلاة والفساد للعمل that the acceptance and the rejection of our actions is very much dependent on our niyyah. ونيتنا شرط لسائر العمل it's a precondition for the acceptance and rejection of our Ibadat. Why am I doing it? For the sake of Allah. So, with the presence of two things, my a'mal are accepted, my hajj will be accepted, my salah will be accepted, my sadaqat will be accepted. 
aswabuhu wa akhlasuhu it has to be sincere akhlasuhu wa aswabuhu ay ala tariqati rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam i need to do hajj according to the way of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he is on hajj he does different different rituals he performs wudu before tawaf and he says khudu anni manasikakum he goes to perform the tawaf and he prays and he says khudu anni manasikakum everything that he does gradually systematically he was teaching the companions so how to do hajj has been mentioned by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam buy a book study it properly before you go to hajj or you will make lots of mistakes and you will end up giving lots of dam number 1 it, we have to ask ourselves why am i going to hajj purify my intention number 2 is i ask myself what is the maqasid of hajj what is the objective behind hajj is it just traveling is it just circumambulating is it just the movement of my limbs it's more than that when we study the maqasid of ibadah it becomes very clear that one of the reasons we go to hajj is to follow the footsteps of ibrahim alayhi salam shah waliullah dahlawi he mentions in maqasid of hajj this chapter that he has compiled and he spoke about the purpose behind going to hajj is to really increase our love for al islam to increase our level of ibadat when you go to hajj and you come back mashallah you start praying on time many people they come back they keep a beard many people they give more charity all of a sudden there seems to be a change in their ibadat an increase in their ibadat and then when we go to hajj it affects our mannerism our code of conduct we become a better muslim we become a better human being a better person we come back and we become more akhira centric as opposed to dunya centric and this is why imam hasan al basari rahimahullah ta'ala he says when a person goes to hajj and they come back from hajj the sign that their hajj has become accepted is an yarji'a zahidan fi dunya raghiban fi al-akhirati that they become more akhira centric their focus is more akhira pleasing allah azza wa jalla they stop the haram any haram that they were involved in they abandon that they stop that and then they become more focused with their ibadat when it comes to the the the, the first takbir of salah the men never miss that when it comes to nawafil voluntary prayers they never miss that and this is the quality of the people who perform hajj properly so part of my comprehensive plan before i go on this life changing journey the journey of a lifetime is purify my intention number 2 is why am i going to hajj number 3 is to study properly about hajj buy a book study it from the beginning to the end a few times know the rules and regulations of hajj nawaqidul hajj what invalidates hajj what are the mustah what what actions are mustahab what actions are sunnah what actions are wajib what actions are fard i have to know all of this when do i need to do tawaf al ziyara when do i do tawaf al qudum tawaf al ifad all of this i need to know before i go to hajj this is all part of my preparation and then i look forward to the reward this is also part of my plan i look forward to the reward the immense reward that awaits a person who goes to hajj my dearest brothers and sisters this is a life changing journey it requires lots of preparation it requires that we exhaust our effort and energy going to hajj and paying for the ticket is easy for many people but once you are out there it's a challenging task you have to be very careful from the moment that you put your ihram on all of a sudden you are in a state of absolute sacredness and this is what the ihram is the things that you are able to do outside of ihram you are no longer able to do that all of a sudden you are imposed with rules and regulations so you have to adhere to those rules and regulations and not violate those rules and regulations another important point that i wanted to mention is part of our comprehensive plan is that we have to acquire patience before we go to hajj if you do not have patience then you will struggle throughout hajj and it may be the case that your hajj becomes invalid why because from the moment you book your ticket you will find challenge after challenge after challenge you may struggle with your travel agency you may struggle when you go online you may struggle with your visa you may struggle when you land in jidda whether you land in medina or jidda wherever you're landing you may face many many challenges you may face challenges performing uh, the hajj properly you're not physically able 
you have to be patient throughout this journey. If someone pushes you, you don't push them back. If someone says something to you, you don't say something back. This is all part of Hajj. Hajj is not just going there and performing these rituals. You have to be very mindful of other people. You can't be selfish. When I'm in Mina and I'm uh, in the tents, I, I, if I'm drinking water, I have to give water to other people. If I'm going to the toilet to relieve myself, I have to be courteous towards other people. If I'm eating, I have enough food and I share it with other people. This is also the beauty of Hajj. Hajj teaches us not to be selfish, not to live a life of individualism, to be kind and compassionate to other people. These are the benefits of going to Hajj. Hajj is not just going there wearing the ihram and then you go around the house of Allah and the movements. These are integral parts of Hajj. But the lessons that we derive, the fawa'id that could be extracted, istakhraj al-fawa'id, the benefits that we extract are, it makes you a better human being. It makes you a better Muslim. You come back with better mannerism, better qualities, and better code of conduct, better morals, better ethics. And this is the purpose of ibadat. When we look at the purpose of praying, what does praying do? It teaches me discipline. It conditions me. It teaches me that I can't pray when I want. I have to follow a set time. It teaches me discipline. When I go to Hajj, I can't do eight rounds around the house of Allah. Eight shawt, eight ashwat around the house of Allah. I have to do seven. I have to drink zamzam in a particular way. And I have to pray at Maqam Ibrahim a particular way. The starting point of Safa, the, 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 the Sa'i is at Safa, then, at, then finish, at, come back from Marwa again. Everything has a proper system. It teaches us discipline, brothers and sisters. And this is something that many of us do not have. We don't have proper discipline within our lives because we haven't understood the maqasid of ibadah. So if I'm going to Hajj, part of my preparation for Hajj is not just preparing the passport, preparing the visa, and just stressing over the, the actual process. But most importantly, think about those five points that we mentioned. Husnun niya, my intention, why am I going to Hajj? Am I going to strengthen my relationship with Allah? Am I going to attain the pleasure of Allah? Have I studied properly before I've gone to Hajj? Do I understand what invalidates Hajj? What are the fara'id, what are the wajibat, what are the sunan of Hajj? Have I studied all of that? Do I know about the great fada'il of Hajj? That when I go there, the immense reward awaits me. Am I aware of all of that? These are the questions that you need to ask yourself now and then. And the final point, as we mentioned at the beginning, if you have the financial ability, if you have the physical ability, do not delay hajj. Man arad al hajj fal yata'ajjal. Do not delay. Fa innahu qad yamradul marid. As the Prophet says, they might fall ill, they might become incapable physically, financially, then they're not able to go to hajj. May Allah give us the tawfiq to embark on this beautiful journey. Those of you who are currently struggling to go to Hajj, make lots of dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, Allah will open the doors that you may think that are closed upon you from sources you perceive not. May Allah azza wa jal give us the tawfiq to implement everything that we have heard. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Inshallah, we will see you in our next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.